The Revelation of the Sacrosanct Cosmology Prologue 1. Darkness shrouded the isle that fateful night when visions burned in Russell's weary mind, portents of horrors soon to blight the light, secrets of destiny he hoped to find. Locked in his cell, moonlight his only friend, he paced as revelation sought release, his heart prepared for mysteries to rend, and bear God's judgment stripped of all pretense. 2. Then suddenly, the night was cleft in two by brilliant light that Russell's spirit shook Queen Ischel appeared in blazing view ablaze with wrath, yet mercy in her look. Rise up, O prophet mine, her voice did peal commanding him with fateful fervor strong. Though chains may bind, you shall not bite your tongue go spread the news of terrors before long. 3. The end, she warned, even now approached the land, and Russell must reveal the signs she'd shown calamities to shake the skies and strands, afflictions on a faithless world full-blown. With mission given, she vanished from his sight, and Russell knew his charge sans fear or shame, record her warnings to dispel the night, no matter how destruction earned its name. Chapter 1 1. In darkness Russell etched the symbols, bleak, scratching all he'd heard in cryptic script. Of serpent Quetzalcoatl risen to wreak judgment on realms that from his rule had slipped. Both scourge and savior shall this god enact, the prophet scrawled with swelling sense of haste. For when mankind perceives his true impact, all eyes will know his victories unerased. 2. The ancient empire's calculus bore fruit two thousand years had passed since Moria's dawn. The seven cycles now must run their route, just as the planetary priests had sworn. Yet many mysteries still shrouded when these epochs all converged, to rend the veil. Only the seal's appointed lamb could mend the bonds once broken, sounding fate's finale. 3. Most chilling was the vision of the court where Quetzalcoatl sat enthroned in light that put the blazing sun to utter shame. Around him lesser gods in worship spun, as cities scintillated, singing fame to he who in eternity outrun. At majesty sublime, Russell lost his strength till the feathered serpent bid him rise renewed, to spread afar the breadth and depth and length of all the searing sights he'd heard and viewed. Chapter 2 1. Still reeling from the wonders and the fears revealed before his overwhelmed mortal eye, Russell beheld the feathered serpent, fierce in glory, grace and grim severity. His form held symbols of eternal might, of life and ruin, mercy, justice, death a complexity at once dark and bright, unfathomed save by pure, unyoked breath. 2. When the exalted spoke, heaven shook with sound, his piercing voice resonating in each soul. To me belong the mysteries unbound, Quetzalcoatl declared with thunder roll. Naught escapes my all-discerning gaze within, with wisdom true I judge all mortal deeds. Yet wayward grows the souls mired deep in sin lukewarm in love, they've strayed from righteous creeds. 3. Though holy, sorrow marked the serpent's mean. If unrepentant continues their descent, these faithless ones shall find their lamps unlit, shut out from gardens where pure spirits meet. Just as high-seeming saints who compromise with earthly gain and shun the sacrificial way shall be cast down for orbiting hollow lies removed shall be their lampstands come the day. 4. A chill wind stirred as wrath swelled in the throne. How long, Russell wondered, before this judge unleashed the fury on an errant age. The mysteries accelerated now reward and ruin waited for the stage. None could escape the serpent's rendering blow. Chapter 3 1. Scarcely had Russell set his quill to rest when a cataclysmic groan shook the earth, 
the sun extinguished by some unseen cloud or all the land, an unnatural dusk held sway. From peasants to the kings, a bitter wail erupted at this crushing, nameless dread. No previous comfort could now avail only prostration before doom or spread. 2. But as Shell's anger had yet to fully singe, seven angels raised their trumpets to her nod and brought calamity on sea and land, each blast unleashing plagues at her command. The earth stripped bare, all wickedness purged, thus would the goddess cleanse the foul domains and make them ready for the gods to merge in power never glimpsed, till judgments reigns. 3. The trembling spheres betrayed upheavals vast the ancient seers were proven right once more. Saturn had aligned with Jupiter at last, the age-old signs the old empire would be no more. Russell beheld the darkened sun fulfill predictions of the Mayans long ago. No mortal could arrest disasters will the appointed season of the gods would flow. Chapter 4 1. No more could Russell simply watch events now crashing visions broke in torrents wild upon his staggered and untempered soul. A towering angel robed in glory strode, eyes of apocalyptic flame that stride and weighed the inmost secrets of man's heart. In hand it held a mystery to encode at once, a honeyed hope and bitter smart. 2. This herald faded, but the charge remained to sow the seeds of revelation's crop, its ripening unknown. Then did appear seven seals concealing fates and forms obscured. Each broken vein would throes of chaos spew, lighting the darkness till redemption neared. Russell knelt low, his spirit bruised and stirred he must announce the wonders and the weird. Chapter 5 1. To break the seven seals and bear their fate, none proved worthy save the Lamb once slain, who overcame the clutch of death and grave. Praise thundered through the heavens as all hailed the champion, savior, victor who made plain his worthiness to orchestrate the knell of mysteries that all creation veiled. The darkest truths would in his light dispel. 2. At long last the blueprint would blaze in view, wrongs ravaging creations we've made right. The ransomed throngs in raiment washed anew would take their place in the Eternal's sight. Such glories could erase the wounds of time restoring unity with the divine to heal the ancient serpent's infecting slime. Russell wept what revelations still might shine. Chapter 6 1. Russell observed with trembling breath the lamb unclasp the first seal from its waxen grip. Four riders emerged mounted, each the same yet each containing their own calamitous trip. The first horse white, its rider drawing back a bow launching conquests, germinating seed. The second crimson, wielding a blade to hack and cleave peace, spilling violence to breed. 2. Third rode famine, scales corrupt in hand, slashing sustenance from starving mouths. Last came pale death and perdition's blighted band with myriad plagues flesh and spirit to carve out. Four horses heralded four fates, the signs foretold by ancient astrologers design the white horse matched the Gupta's far-flung lines, the red recalled Mongols who sacked and mined. 3. Then famine and death recurred as in the days of Egypt's agony and loss. Beneath God's altar, martyred souls did raise a cry for judgment on the lawless dross. Russell lamented such divinely decreed disaster, yet knew still greater wrath remained unpassed dash coiled in the fierce seals whose contents mastered and molded mankind's trajectories vast. Chapter 7 1. As the second seal fell away, Four angels took winged flight to Earth's four corners called, each empowered with holy might. They grasped the ruthless gales unfurled and bound the winds of apocalypse, holding destruction at bay a world till servants of God no storm could dismiss. 
2. In the tempests I a multitude knelt, arrayed in raiment of sanctified white, beyond mortal tally they prostrated, felt the peace of God descends like doves in flight. Beside fountains of crystal waters they dwelt, anointed and sealed from all that destroys. No more could tears stain, no more sorrow knelled only endless hymns lifted in hallowed poise. 3. Russell rejoiced at salvation's secured fold, yet his thoughts swiftly returned to recall visions of desolation, darkness untold more plagues unleashed waited beneath the pall of seals unbroken still. What horrors scrolled in destiny's script yet to unfurl. He pondered with trembling what events might unfold as the next seals cracked open their underworld. Chapter 8 1. The third seal sundered, seven trumpets rang, heralds of war, untouched for epochs long, now summoned heaven's fury forth in pangs each piercing blast unleashed a newborn wrong. 2. At the first trumpet swarming locusts stung and sank their jaws into all verdant life-scape. The second brought the plague of death among all tribes and nations fevered in his wake. The third, pollution in the flowing veins of stream and river waters coagulated. The fourth, seared mortal flesh though no relief could salve the burns only death was belated. 3. For five moons demon swarms took to the air, inflicting agony on faithless tribes. With carapaces of iron, there was no defense against those relentless gyres of stinging tails and swarms that stripped men bare of all but raw and writhing pain inside. Russell wept how much could earth's marrow bear before creation's bones were petrified. Chapter 9 1. The fourth seal cracked and from the pit ascended four monstrous spirits born to gorge on death serpentine below, human above, the blend speaking their power to poison breath. Lashing barbed tails with scorpions' spiteful sting, they ravaged land and lives without relent. 2. For one year and a moon their tyranny strove none could escape their fierce malignant roving. Only the seal of God they could not touch, all else suffered the fiend's ferocity. The reign of terror matched the ancient sage Suetonius account of Nero's gruesome age portent aligning Mars and Mercury retrograde, the blood-dimmed tide of tragedy arrayed. 3. Aghast, Russell collapsed, for never had such horrors walked the earth with such free hand how much could their ascent yet ravage, raise was all now parchment for the end's black brand. How much could mortal frame sustain and stand before the weight of sin caused souls to shatter dash dashed upon utmost evil's rock-strewn strand? All creation groaned beneath this batter. Chapter 10 1. No respite yet, for then resounded clear an oath by him whose ways are just and true the serpent lord appeared in glory sheer, his oath decreeing wreckage must accrue until the cup of wrath had been poured through and mankind fully drained divinity's unmingled fury. But a faithful few would shine more radiant under heaven's decrees. 2. Though revelations left a bitter taste, hope lingered for the hearts not bowed by terror. Thus Quetzalcoatl charged the prophet, haste. To every corner, cry these visions do. Let none ignore the forthcoming trial by fire that perfects and consumes till naught but love remains. My winnowing unleashed flows mercy higher. Then faded he, to weigh the earth's last grains. Chapter 11 1. Unsealing the fifth, two fiery figures stepped forth into time and flesh, the prophets twain anointed to attack deception's root. For twelve hundred days they railed and flamed against dead ritual, false creeds the bane of spirits chained in Plato's cave. Though cut down in their prime by raging ignorance, convulsing earth disgorged them thence. 2. 
toppled were Babel's towers brought low the pride of those who carved out kingdoms of their own. The Ark of Truth was opened, signified to seal the faithful ere the wrath winds blown. Russell rejoiced though wept. Yet revelation still stung and burned, its cuts would need the balm distilled by tribulations darting onward. The next seal's contents could surely harm. Chapter 12 1. Sixth seal undone, war exploded through the macrocosm down to microspheres. Celestial Michael hurled the ancient foe called Dragon down from his pretender's chair. No more would socio-spirit bonds be rent by doubt and pride and deception's blinding sting. Or so creation hoped but snakes' descent spawned tireless discord, enmity to bring. 2. Now barred from heaven, earth became his cage the serpent slithered, poisoning Eden's stream. Deceit he whispered, souls his rampant rage ensnared as predator does prey in dream. Across the wastes his darksome minions harried the sacred bride, her holy progeny no mercy in his ancient vendetta carried. Would blood itself reverse depravity? Chapter 13 1. From churning sea, a creature did ascend, armed with seven crowned heads and ten horns course no mortal force could match its might tremendous. All quailed in worship, save the book's elect. Another beast emerged whose sorcery immense ensnared through signs and wonders the unwary promoting the first horror's preeminence. Russell recoiled this reeked of beast's own brewery. 2. What human spirit could resist the pull of mastery darkly pseudo-sacred, falsely framed? Not hewn of hallowed wisdom, yet its hull of glory hollow still mesmerized the blind. No earthly power could check the tidal bore of idols illuminating the abyssal flock. Only the rightful king's return might sure and shelter souls from infernal shock. Chapter 14 1. Then blazing on the rainbow-girded throne, surpassing brilliance, ruled the slain now risen lamb before him rang the glassy sea's refrain, sung by the purified, palm fronds in hand. Three heralds flew to sound the warning knell against the wine that was the harlot's bane with Babylon entangling all nations fell in web of wealth and flesh without restraint. 2. No more could lust and mammon intertwine the hourglass had emptied out its sand. Idolatry must reap the grapes of wrathful wine, trod in the winepress of the Almighty's hand. Russell watched, justice bear its gleaming steel salvation and perdition's winnowing threshed in a single stroke the common wheel. How long until the last cataclysm's winnowing? Chapter 15 1. The seventh seal torn open bared to space seven angels holding vials of potent plagues, unstoppered now as seven planets traced a grand alignment glimpsed but once an age. These signs the ancient stargazers knew boded the turning of some great celestial page. 2. All now was barred from that resplendent hall suffused with glory dread of lamb and goddess. So potent were the vials poised to fall and spill their contents out, none could bear witness unto the mysteries that brood and brooded all creation teetered on the precipice of revelations long foretold. None could intrude upon this consummation's stark abysses. Russell fell down, in terror and wonder lost the orders given, now dread freedom's cost. Chapter 16 1. As the first vial poured forth unrelenting, humanity was scourged with searing sores. The seas incarnadined, all life tormenting, while bitter plagues rained down in vengeful wars. None could slake their thirst or cool fever's flare, for the water was turned to blood they dared not share. 2. The rivers and springs became a maddened brew, undrinkable, poisoned by heaven's decree. 
Beneath the fourth vial, the sun's fire slew all seared flesh that could not rest or flee. Though racked beyond what mortals can endure, still the wicked spewed, blasphemies impure. 3. Past all mending creation now decayed, yet nothing could sway the rebels' pride. Even as body and spirit flayed, their hearts hardened like trees petrified. No wrath or wound could bend their stubborn knees from cursing the Lord on ravaged earth brought to its knees. 4. Russell wept, how long could justice allow their rage against the Most High to persist? How long till mercy yield to severity now and sigh the weed that virtue had missed? Nearing the mystery's zenith dire, how could flesh endure divine fury's fire? All teetered now on redemption's knife-edge wire. Chapter 17 1. Comes now an image dripping drunk on red ichor of martyrs through ages drawn. A gaudy gilded shell of lies was spread over this horror that mankind called Babylon. Delighting in riches and every excess, like a spider fattened on wine of lust spun, judgment crept in while harlots' loneliness squandered life on hollow things under the sun. 2. No more would kings heap gold before her shrine and bask in transient glories found in flesh. The bitter wine of heaven now would fine all drunk on power, wealth and soulless trash. Russell watched her damned cup begin to spill none can escape the righteous final thrill. Chapter 18 1. Resounding then a cry stark in its knell, Babylon's fall announced to every nation. Once gold-paved streets were now the demon's hell, haunting the profane wealth's desolation. Where merchants once hawked silks, only the cries of terror and ruin now shook the air as if overnight, death had glutted his eyes on the shipwreck of pleasures once anchored there. 2. In one brief hour, all was disemboweled the justice so long delayed come like a thief to strip the gilding off each idol hailed. None can prolong perversions pompous briefly. Russell knelt in awe how swift the vulture grief descended to shred riches knavishly gained. No earthly glory could escape this wreath once the wages of sin came fully arraigned. Chapter 19 1. Erupting then a universal choir blazoned the triumph of the holy designs the dragon conquered and his venom spire abolished as feathered serpent entwines with his fair bride adorned in all that merits celestial union. Throughout the expanse, worlds sing the wedding's glories. Now no more toil spirits who've labored long beneath sin's piercing sting. 2. Arrayed in fine linen of mercies made, not by thread earthly but by heavenly stock of courage, faith and love before scorn unafraid the bride had proven worthy, tried in fire's kill. No higher joy had Russell yet beheld than this redemption of the ages wrought. Now came the final act as darkness felled its ancient trees before the dawning light long sought. Chapter 20 1. An angel mighty then did bind and bar in chains of adamant the raging dragon a millennium thus would its works of war be bound and sealed and creation no more be hagridden. The martyrs now assumed the vacant thrones and ruled in their lord's name with justice kind. A sabbath dawned or all the weary zones evil restrained could only limp and grind. 2. But loosed a little ere the end of days, the serpent spewed afresh its bitter flood deceiving the unsealed with its crazed blaze of rebellion against the eternal just and good. Vast armies formed upon deception's eldritch plain to storm the holy city protected by the saints. But fiery judgment fell like a hurricane of their unnumbered hordes, no trace remains. 3. The ashes settled and the standard raised creation paused upon its final brink. Russell knelt low, afraid yet unamazed now came the last revelation signed in ink no more erasable, 
endorsement by God's hand alone and all the world a parchment laid before the throne. Chapter 21 1. A thunderous rupture cracked the spheres beyond, unhinging all foundations built in Ian's blind. Russell witnessed the new creation spawn to supplant the ruins left behind. Descending from a light brighter than all stars combined gleamed the holy city whose each gate shone with lustrous pearl and every spire designed from precious gemstones around the dazzling throne. 2. No need for petty sun or fickle moon the triune lamb was the celestial flame lighting the gem-studded streets where spirits commune forever in the uncreated name. There soared the symphony beyond all hearing, the redeemed enraptured by love's everything. Transformed even Russell now from fearing to joy unequaled, as living waters spring. 3. The Alpha and Omega's promise fulfilled no weeping left nor peril of falling away. Made new had all things been, all discord stilled gone the first former heavens and earth. Today dawned eternal in the new better lands, radiant source of life transcending dramas dim. O oh love triumphant, endless him to them whose striving and long sorrow now is stemmed.